Yes, you're welcome back. You're still on to the School of Money, and I'm still Olumide Emmanuel. Today, we're looking at bridging the gap. Bridging the gap between the rich and the poor. Well, we need to first of all answer the question, is there really a gap between the rich and the poor? Of course, there is a gap. All you need to do is look all around you, and you will see the millions of poor people that we have in the world today, and you see how that the rich and the poor are very, very far from one another. Now, the United Nations have defined poverty as living below $2 a day, and extreme poverty as living below a dollar a day. But if you look at the world today, we have over 7 billion people on the face of the earth, and over 70% of the people on earth today are poor. Over 70% of people in our world today live in the place called poverty land. Even in my country, Nigeria, we have about 180 million people in our country and over 70 million people, over 70 million are in extreme poverty and another 63 million are in poverty. So even in my country, about 70% of the populace are poor. But when you look all around you, you'll find out that before you can see one rich man, you probably have counted 100 or 200 or even 1,000 poor people. So there is a gap between the rich and the poor. And when you look all around you, you find out that it seems as if the rich always gets richer and the poor gets poorer. So how can we begin to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor? It begins by identifying what the gaps are. So I know that there are gaps between the rich and the poor. And I believe you do too. But what are those gaps? Well, I have personally identified a lot of gaps between the rich and the poor. And in this broadcast today, I want to share with you on seven of the gaps that I have identified between the rich and the poor. Once we are able to identify these gaps, then all you need to do is to begin to look into how you as an individual can begin to bridge the gap. Because whether you are rich or poor, these gaps once identified, can make you richer if you are already rich and can make you rich if you are poor. Number one, the first gap between the rich and the poor is what I call the knowledge gap. Yes, the knowledge gap. You see, knowledge is power. What you know is what determines how far you go. If someone is producing results where you are not producing results, there is something they know that you don't know. And that is why what you know determines how far you go. I've said it over and over again. If you are not informed, you'll be deformed. If you are not inspired, you will expire. If you are not in the know, you cannot be in the flow. If you are not updated, you will become outdated. Because information is the key to transformation. So those who know rule over those who do not know. So the first gap between the rich and the poor is knowledge gap. There are things that rich people know that poor people don't know. There are some dimensions of knowledge that rich people have that poor people don't have. Have you noticed that most of the time, a lot of people that are not financially okay do not have respect for intellectual property? Have you noticed that they don't have a strong respect and desire for information? Many times they think that learning ended when they graduated from school. But life is a school. In the school of life, you are forever learning, and there is no graduation. Because, see, the day you stop learning, you start dying. Knowledge grows you up. Ignorance blows you up. So you've got to have enough knowledge in order for you to assess that realm that you want to assess. A lot of people are poor because they don't know how to be rich. A lot of people are poor because they don't know how to make money. They don't know how to manage money. They don't know how to multiply money. And those dimension of information is what the rich have that helps them. So if you want to be able to see the gap between the rich and the poor bridge, you must realize that, number one, there is a knowledge gap. So you must give attention to knowledge. You must give attention to reading. You must give attention to studying. You must give attention to the acquisition of information. Wisdom is the principal thing. So in life, you need to get wisdom. You need to get understanding. You need to do everything you can to acquire knowledge. And once you get the knowledge, don't let it go for anything. So the first gap between the rich and the poor is the knowledge gap. The second gap between the rich and the poor is the mindset gap. 
Yes, it's the mindset gap. You see, there are mindsets that rich people have that poor people do not have. There are mindsets that poor people have that rich people do not have. Many of these are already revealed in the book, The School of Money, and that's why you need to get a copy of that book. So go to our website. Uh, you can go to lumidemano.org. You can go to commonsensegroup.com, and you can buy the book. Order for it. You can get the downloadable version. You can get the MP3 version of our audio program. They will help you. The poor seem to always have the same mindset. I've met poor people all over the world. And when you sit down and talk to poor people, they always seem to think alike. And I've met rich people all over the world. And when you sit down and talk to rich people, they also almost seem to think alike. For instance, poor people will tell you, I cannot afford to save. I don't have money to save. But rich people will tell you, I cannot afford not to save. So when you talk about savings, they have two different mindsets. Poor people will tell you, nobody wants to help anybody. There's nobody there to help you. But rich people will tell you, Oh, there are a lot of people that want to be a part of what I'm doing. I just need to have something to offer them. I just need to have value to offer them. I just need to find problems to solve. So you find that the mindset is an issue. A lot of poor people have not done what they need to do to become rich because they have a negative mindset. They are so pessimistic about life. Their worldview is negative. Their perception is negative. And they attract negative things to themselves just because of that mindset. So if you want to see the gap breached, between the rich and the poor, one gap that has to be bridged is that mindset gap. You must change your mindset. You know, yoi shina, yoi kandai. Good thinking, good product. Uh, there was a program that was taking place, um, a soap opera in my country, Nigeria, many years ago while growing up. And there was a particular character uh, in that particular uh, TV soap that has a slogan that was characteristic of who he was. He was very poor, but he was not talking like a poor man. He was always talking like a rich man. He was always behaving like a rich man. So when they talked to him, he said, why are you doing this? He said, listen, 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 listen to me. To be a millionaire, think like a millionaire. To be a millionaire, think like a millionaire. And over a period of time, in that particular soap, he actually became rich. Why? Because he was always thinking like a rich man. He was always talking like a rich man. He was always behaving like a rich person. And over a period of time, he was able to attract the riches. So your mindset will determine how far you go. So number one is the knowledge gap. Number two is the mindset gap. Number three is the habit gap. The third gap between the rich and the poor is their habits. Rich people have some habits that they live by, while poor people also have habits that they live by. If you sit a rich man down, he will tell you a lot of habits he has. He has the habit of always learning. He has the habit of always saving. He has the habit of always investing. He has the habit of always looking for ways to increase his net worth. He has a habit that helps him to become rich. But look at the poor man. He doesn't have a savings culture. When you tell him to buy a book, the book is too expensive. A poor man will spend money to eat, but will not spend money to buy a book. When you empty your purse, you empty your wallet into your stomach, it will end up in the toilet. But when you empty your purse, you empty your wallet into your mind, it will create a future for you. So there are a lot of people that would rather spend money on food, spend money on clothes, spend money on shoes, spend money on things that don't matter than to spend money on books, on seminars, on tapes, and on things that will educate them. And that kind of habit is why people are poor. A lot of rich people, whenever they see something that will help them, they will never say it's too expensive because they know that you can't place value on intellectual property. You can't place value on knowledge. Listen, you can buy a newspaper for $2. But the value of that newspaper does not have to be $2. Because if you buy the newspaper for $2, and through that newspaper you're able to get a job that pays you $3,000 a month, the value of that newspaper has shot off from $2 to $3,000 a month. If you buy a magazine for $10, the value of that magazine does not have to be $10. Because you can get information from that magazine that can turn your life around and cause you to have millions coming into your life. One of the things I'm going to be doing in this uh, particular um, series is to help you to know that you are responsible for the future that you desire. You are responsible for the kind of life that you want to see happen. And no one will plan your life for you if you don't plan it by yourself. So what are the habits in your life? What are the habits that you live by? What are the habits that you have developed? Have you developed the habit of savings? Have you developed an investment habit? Have you developed a personal development habit? 
Have we developed an optimistic habit? Have we developed the habit of always expecting the positive, of always declaring the positive? It's very, very important for you to make sure that you have the right habit. Because the gap between the rich and the poor is a knowledge gap. It's a mindset gap. It's an habit gap. I said there are seven gaps between the rich and the poor. Number one is the knowledge gap. Number two is the mindset gap. And number three is the habit gap. Number four. The fourth gap between the rich and the poor is the association gap. Association gap. You see, you need to understand that in the world that we live in right now, your association will determine your destination. A wise man once said, where you will be in five years will be determined by the books you read and the friends you keep. The books you read talks about your information. The friends you keep talk about your association. So your information and your association determines your destination. So if you want to become successful, move with successful people. You have heard it said over and over again. Show me your friends, and I will show you the kind of person that you are. Show me your friend, and I will show you the kind of person you are. What does that mean? The people you move with will tell me where you are headed. Birds of the same feather flock together. So if you want to be rich, you need to move with the rich. If you want to be poor, move with the poor. So association is very key. If a man works with wise men, he will be wise. If a man works with foolish people, it won't be long because their foolishness will rub off on him. So the gap between the rich and the poor is an association gap. If you have ever related with a rich man, you are not poor, you are trying to be rich, or you're poor, you're trying to be rich, and then you meet rich people, you meet people that operate on a higher level than you are, you find that the more you move with them, the more you imbibe their thinking, the more you imbibe their beliefs, the more you imbibe their culture, and before you know it, the more they open you up to their world and to the leverages that their world has to offer. Have you noticed that tenants make friends with tenants? <laughs> Landlords make friends with landlords. Have you noticed? Now, if you are a tenant and your friends are landlords, it won't be long before you become a landlord. You know why? There will be positive peer pressure. Because everyone around you is a landlord. One way or the other, they will help connect you to the leverages that will help you to become one. They will help inspire you. They will help challenge you. They will help motivate you so that you can also become a landlord. Have you noticed that if you are moving with people that are concerned about developing themselves, concerned about making sure that they become better in life, they want to go to school, they want to get more education, they want to read books, they want to attend seminars, have you noticed that over a period of time you would like to join them? But if you are moving with people that will tell you, let's go to the club, let's go and do this, let's go and have fun, oh, let's do this, you, you end up like them. So you need to understand that the people you associate with will determine how far you go in life. In life, you don't need everybody. You only need the right set of people. Everybody cannot be your friend. When you sit down with rich people, you find out that they are very few friends. They can count the number of friends they have on their fingers. But poor people, everybody is their friend. So you've got to be careful. In order to bridge that gap between the rich and the poor, it's an association gap. So change your association so that you can change your destination. The next gap between the rich and the poor is the opportunity gap. Opportunity gap. Now, listen and listen well. I've heard so many people say, hey, we don't have the same kind of opportunity. If I have that kind of opportunity, I will not be where I am today. No, 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 no. Opportunities may not be equal, but they appear to everyone at every point in time. Do you know that it is better to be prepared, waiting for opportunities, than for opportunities to come and meet you unprepared? So if you tell me you don't have the opportunities, are you really prepared for those opportunities? When they finally show up, are you sure you're set? Not too long ago, we have one of our young um, uh, mentees uh, growing up around us. He's, he's a comedian. And uh, I've made a commitment to do everything I can to help people around me to become what they need to be. So I give him platforms from time to time to be able to exhibit his, 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 um, his gifts. And then I traveled out um, to another country and we we're talking about a program, and they wanted a comedian. I said, oh, I've got a guy that I can bring. So they said, oh, no problem, bring him. 
So they are willing to fly him in, pay for his ticket, pay for his hotel, and even give him, give him some honorarium. I said, okay, no problem, I'm going to talk to him. And when I finally called him to tell him about the event, guess what? He does not have an international passport. So the opportunity has come for him to travel abroad, to be able to you know, do a show abroad, and be able to have a greater platform, get foreign income, but he did not have a passport. Now, in what way does being poor stop him from maximizing that opportunity? It was not being poor that stopped him from maximizing the opportunity. It was not doing what he needed to do that was going to stop him from the opportunity. So you need to understand that one of the gaps between the rich and the poor is the opportunity gap. The rich know how to spot opportunities. The poor don't. So most of the time when you say you don't have opportunity, the opportunities are all around you, but you are blind to them because of your mindset. You don't see them because you don't understand them. So you need to understand that sometimes opportunity comes disguised as problems. So what poor people do? They complain about the problem. What do rich people do? They see the problem as an opportunity to make money, and they plan on how to solve the problem. That's how the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Now, listen, I'm not saying that we all have equal opportunity. I do realize, I do acknowledge, I do recognize that in different parts of the world, there are some people that have more opportunities than others. But one thing I've come to realize is no matter how bad you think things are around you, if you have the right information and the right kind of mindset, you can always make a way for yourself, no matter how bad things are. Listen and listen well. A wise man once said, if you cannot fly, run. If you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, crawl. No matter what, just make sure that you are making progress. And that's what it's all about. I wrote a book many years ago on maximizing opportunities, and I need to get a copy of that book. That book will tell you seven ways to identify opportunities and 15 universal facts about opportunity. So one gap between the rich and the poor is the opportunity gap. And once you know how to bridge that gap, it will help you to be able to go far. The next gap between the rich and the poor is the technology gap. Technology gap. Have you noticed that we have millions of people on Facebook? But how many of them are making money on Facebook? We have millions of people on Twitter. I'm not there, I'm making money on Twitter. We have millions of people on WhatsApp, on BB. I'm not there, I'm making money. We have a lot of people on all kinds of social media platforms. We have millions, if not billions, of people on the website using Google every day. But I'm not there, I'm making money on it. So the gap between the rich and the poor, again, is a technology gap. The poor use technology for entertainment and social relationship. The rich use technology as a leverage to increase their wealth and multiply their wealth. And that is a gap between the rich and the poor. So if you are listening to me right now, you're one of those people that waste away your life on Facebook, waste away your life on Twitter, waste away your life on social media, and you're not thinking about how to make money from those platforms, you're not thinking about how to use those platforms to increase your wealth, to, to speed up your wealth, then the poor you will always be. Because rich people are not the ones stopping you from making money. It is your mindset and your lack of understanding of the leverage that that technology brings that is making you to remain the way you are. In the 21st century, technology is a leverage that helps you to speed up your wealth. Now listen and listen well. We're right now in the concluding part of today's episode. We've been looking at bridging the gap. Bridging the gap between the rich and the poor. I've been able to help you understand that there really exists a gap between the rich and the poor. And that gap is made up of seven different components. So we've been looking at the seven gap between the rich and the poor so that we know how to bridge those gaps. I've shared six of them with you. The final gap between the rich and the poor is what I call the grace gap. Yes, grace. You see, grace is that endowment. You see some people, you talk about the fact that, oh, he's, he, he carries himself with grace. Oh, he has grace. Or oh, he's graced. Now, when you, whenever you hear the word grace, it talks about an endowment that rests upon you. It talks about something that you don't really labor for, something that is released upon you as a result of, of being endowed with it. Um, sometimes you can use the word favor when you talk about grace. You talk about people being fortunate, or you talk about people being blessed, or you talk about people being favored, or people being graced. Now that's one difference between the rich and the poor. I wanted to know that even though you look all around and some people tell you they are self-made millionaires, there are no self-made millionaires anywhere in the world. No one has the power to make themselves to become whatever they need to become without having grace backing them up. So one gap between the rich and the poor that needs to be bridged is the grace gap. Do you carry grace? Are you connected to grace? 
Do you have grace? Do you understand grace? Grace is so powerful that it can turn things around for you. So you need to be a man or a woman of grace. You need to connect to grace. You need to activate grace. You need to carry grace. You need to move with grace. When grace comes into your life, it turns things around. When you have grace, favor is added to your labor. When you add grace, when you have grace, the race of life is smooth. When you have grace, grace delivers you from every form of disgrace. So I want you to do everything you can to make sure that you bridge the grace gap. Grace is multiplied through knowledge. Grace is developed as you continue to develop the good parts and the strength of your life. So you need to make sure you acquire knowledge, get information, so that you can continue to grow in grace, and then you can begin to testify of how grace has helped you in life. So we have looked at the seven gaps between the rich and the poor. So how do we bridge the gap? Begin to do what you need to do in these seven areas that will help you to be able to change the way things are now to the way they ought to be. We've got books, tips, materials, audio programs, seminars, all kinds of stuff that can help you to be able to bridge this gap. Visit our website. Go there, downloadable versions of the audio programs, so many books, and there's a book I have called Maximizing Opportunity. You need to get that book. It will help you. The Making of a Dream. So many materials that we have produced that you need to take advantage of. Once you get this information, they will help you. Well, to meet again in the next episode where I'll be sharing something exciting with you again, keep your dream alive. Bye-bye. Are you feeling angry because the money you earn is not enough for your needs? Or you are frustrated because you can't manage your money properly? Or worried because you can't seem to multiply your money? If this is you, then enroll in our School of Money audio program today and discover how to make, manage, and multiply money. It doesn't matter your financial level or the financial crisis you're facing. This program will help you achieve your financial goal. To learn more, visit www.theschoolofmoney.com.ng.